people listening is that you're going to get takeaways that are going to help you to direct your own training. Do If I understand the shoulder a little bit better and the role of the reticle a little bit better, I can not only um, potentially drop in a few additional exercises to help with my, with my sort of health of my shoulder, as equally important as going, okay, I'm going to try that exercise, is going, the stuff that you're already doing that's really good, can you apply yourself even better in terms of the activation you go through and initiating the movements because you understand that role slightly better? In a throw motion or a punching motion, 50% of force is going to be generated from the lower body. Tackling rugby would be the same. 30% from the midsection and 20% from the shoulder. Often we would have had in strength and conditioning, the conversation around, oh no, you don't don't let your knee become valgus or dive inwards in a squat. That's not good for you. If you squat, that's an energy leak. So we do a lot of work on stabilizing the glutes, screwing the hips out, making sure that we've got good alignment through our squat. Funnily enough, we don't pay the same attention to the shoulder, but it's exactly the same. If the shoulder lacks that stability requirement to keep the shoulder positioned in a good place, it's an energy leak. And because it's so vulnerable because of the range of movement and the architecture of the joint, that's when we can have problems because one to two millimeters of uncontrolled translation could cause an injury. Now, if you go and watch some of the um, Olympic weightlifters at the Olympics, they're, they're doing a PB snatch to win a gold medal. Their knees are flipping all over the place. The architecture and the stability, the musculature around the joint for the knee makes it a more stable joint than the shoulder. Therefore, it's less likely to get injured. Not that it won't get injured, just less likely. I would imagine and we can probably statistically have a look at that. Um, so we have to understand that the shoulder is going to be, if it's a weak link and we're transferring force through the chain, that's where the injury is potentially going to happen. And again, go back to some of the examples we used before, a, a CrossFit muscle up or a, a rugby tackle or anything like that. There's forces being generated outside of just around the shoulder. We're using the hips and the, and the core or whatever to transfer them. So we do need to think about system wide movement when we are thinking about training the shoulder. It's not enough for me just to sit with your elbow on your knee doing a rotation because you're not integrating that stability back into, into a full pattern. Can you move your shoulder through 360 degrees range of movement in all positions pain-free? That's a really good starting point. Um, have you posturally, does it look like the shoulders jump forwards? Have you got one which is like elevated opposite to the other one? So those are some good sort of like real simple things you can do in the mirror and movement tests. And then are there movements when you're training that you do where it feels unstable or cause you pain? Because it could be that it's not painful to move without load, but under fatigue, that stabilization system starts to wear down. So within a session, you start to find that, you know what, I was okay at the beginning. Now my shoulder's starting to hurt. That, that would lead itself more towards an issue around, well, there's probably some muscle imbalance, but then there's also a control issue and that there's some fatigue kicking in and we're not able to stabilize and control the demands of the session without causing some some knock-on issues um, and then as a result of that the bone isn't moving or the joints not moving optimally I deloaded quite aggressively and unintentionally while I was away in South Africa over Christmas probably three to four weeks of not doing a lot and came back in the gym and my shoulder just wasn't feeling very good I had some pinching at end range just felt like a little bit of pain um, going through my 360 like a bar overhead rotations um, it felt like something was sort of catching so I tried to train it, it out for a while, thinking it was probably just a little bit of, of muscle underactivity and, and just needed to get back into it. Gave that sort of two or three weeks. It did improve and I could sort of start to knock a little bit of the discomfort on the head, but wasn't solving it at, at all entirely. So I got in touch with Gemma, she had a look at it and effectively some of the detraining hadn't helped, but I've always known that my right shoulder is less stable than my left. The left is the one that I've had surgery on twice. So I've done a lot of rehab on my left and everyone knows that rehab's really boring. So if you've got one shoulder that's not injured, why would you do that one as well? You just yeah, do the one yeah, that's hurt, yeah. right? And also as soon as it stops hurting, you stop, you stop doing your do rehab, rehab, whereas you should finish it up. It's like your course of antibiotics, finish that bad boy. Yeah, exactly. And that's why calisthenics is great in the, of, of a lead on from a rehabilitation phase of, <clears throat> of do your rehab and then calisthenics, you can move that in because it's more interesting rather than just doing banded exercises with your rotator cuff. But Gem gave my shoulder a full screen, had a good look through it. Um, and ultimately what's happened is I'm like a typical case of not of, of being overpowered in pec and lat. And if we think about how we do an active hang is a good example. It might be that I'm sort of single arm from a bar, single arm active hang, 
to hold that position, I'm gonna crank in hard. And that is gonna do a huge amount of work because I'm asking my, my shoulder to support my 70 odd five kilos of, of weight on it. The rotator cuff is not gonna do that by itself. But the problem that I've got is this rotator cuff isn't doing enough. And, and I've also got a little bit far too much mobility around my shoulder. So because of my laxity around the joint, let's call it that, I don't know that I'm hypermobile, I just don't have, I have a lot of freedom in my joints. I dislocated my hip before. Um, I never really struggled with, with like those kind of range of movement things. But what that means is my control strategy has got to be so much better, particularly around the shoulder, because I have so much options to move, or so many options, um, I need to be able to really be very sniper-like with how that shoulder is going to move. <clears throat> and ultimately, I've lost a little bit of that control, so the stabilizing structures around my shoulder aren't working accurately enough. So I'm having to strip it back, and there's a real simple exercise that we use, which is like a, just a retraction. So like grab a band, wrap it around your hand, and just pull the shoulder into the socket, so the, the band is just providing something to pull against. Gem's got my hand and she's holding it and she and I'm pulling it and she's like, no, it's Latin peck, Latin peck, Latin peck. And I'm just trying to crank it in and come on, this is flipping feels great. And then just that reminder, and I've had to do it through rehab before of how subtle that movement needs to be to justify the rotator cuff. And I think I'd say just encourage people on that in terms of like videoing yourself, doing a couple of like basic movements you'll get a ton of feedback and you can start to understand yourself. And, and this is definitely like, I just encourage everyone to do that, even if you're um, even if you're not injured, haven't got pain, like do a pull up and video it from behind with a vest on or top off if you fancy it. But just so that you can actually, you don't want to do it with a hoodie on, we want to be able, you want to be able to see what's going on. You'll be able to, you'll be able to notice, like do things look symmetrical, what's moving. You might, you might never have even really thought about before. You might go, oh, what's that? And oh, I can actually see my shoulder blade moving here. And, um, and the first thing to think about with that is, is like with the, the simple stuff, pull up, active hang, push up, just yeah. video it and see, am I actually moving? Because it might be that you're not in pain, but if you're not moving symmetrically, then it's certainly not going to be optimal. But, and also you might be able to stop yourself Get, or the things that you do that stop you getting injured, you don't know that you're doing them because you don't get injured, so you don't know yeah. that it's necessary. But the fact that you are staying injury free is a sign that you're doing good things, and yeah. um, that's going to ultimately be built upon good quality movement. And you'll you will be able to assess some of that um, yourself. So that's a that was a big sort of takeaway homework piece um, from me. Yeah. But then, not to not to sort of go against what Tim was saying. Like if you if you are pain, in pain and you're injured. Like going to see a physiotherapist is number one priority. But I 100% think that was a point I wanted to make was that if you are, can you correct it first yourself? Like if we're training athletes, we could see if something move, which we say is like, okay, that's not how we want it to be. We want, we want it to move like that. Let's sort of, sort of work out what's tight. Let's do some stabilization work, get on a couch. Let's, the first port of call is, can we coach you out of it? Can I just get you to move better? as a result of making you aware of how you're moving. So if you find in a push-up that your arm's jumping out, you might have got the control and the stability and the joint range of movement to be able to actually put it in a good position and move better. That's just gonna be the first number one best thing that you can do. And you probably won't be in pain and that's gonna stop you from getting in pain. There was um, a number of exercises we mentioned um, throughout. If you want um, all of those, everything that we talked about in terms of exercises, there are tutorials for all of those. As I said, they make up our movement preparation of, of all the programs um, in that are there inside our virtual classroom, which is where our online um, training programs, etc., are, and an amazing community of people. So, if uh, if you want to see them or have a refresh of them, um, you can get all of those inside the virtual classroom, and you can access. Um, everything on a seven day free trial so actually you know you can go and see those for a week for free um, and check them out give yourself a little refresh if you want to then stay part of it obviously you can and we'd love you to be in there but equally it's there for free if you need it okay.